Hello and welcome to my review of Filth by Irvin Welsh. My copy of the book looks like this, which firstly shows the Sunday Telegraph are a bunch of fools, but there is worse in the form of this trigger warning on the back. Now I do know that I've talked about trigger warnings before, but I do hope we were all able to detect the irony there. This I have mixed feelings about. It seems a little more like an attempt to dress up a warning as humour than an attempt to dress up humour as a warning. That said, this book deals with all of these issues, so if you feel you need this trigger warning, then it's fairly certain that the book won't be for you. Phil follows the misadventures of Detective Sergeant Bruce Robertson, the physical manifestation of toxic masculinity. Robertson is assigned to investigate the violent murder of Ethan Wuri. Wuri is the son of a Nigerian diplomat, so it becomes a high-profile case. However, Wuri is black and Robertson a committed racist, so he doesn't exactly dedicate himself to the job. His investigation instead takes second place to skiving, pining over his estranged wife, eating sausage rolls, drinking, doing drugs, and pursuing meaningless or violent sex. The latter was surprising success given his incredible misogyny and highly dubious personal hygiene. There is an early indicator of the level of humour you can expect from filth in Robertson's detailed description of his presumably well-practiced technique for passing wind one side of a room and timing his move to the other side well enough that somebody else will take the blame. It seems unlikely that that will tickle everybody's funny bone, and considering the previously mentioned warning, a lot of people are not going to get past the first page, which is a shame, because in Robertson, Welsh has created an absolute powerhouse of a character, relating most of the book in an angry, hate-filled stream-of-consciousness monologue that is often laugh-out-loud funny. For the first two-thirds of filth, Robertson, despite his grisly health issues, works various schemes to ruin the hopes of the people around him. Robertson justifies his cruelty to his colleagues as necessary to remove the competition threatening his desire to achieve a promotion he feels unfairly denied. His destruction of his supposed friend, Clifford Blades, shows that his vindictiveness is actually serving itself rather than a specific end. It is misanthropy for misanthropy's sake. The picture that Welsh paints with Robertson is that of a vicious, spiteful man, irredeemable and without a shred of humanity. The first sign that there is more going on is when Robertson instinctively tries to save a heart attack victim. In his muddled thoughts after this event, he confuses an attempt to empathise with him as a discussion of the weekend's football scores. The last third of filth covers the utter collapse of Robertson's psyche. The intrusions of his tapeworm into the narrative become longer, more frequent, and increasingly eloquent, detailing the horrors that have destroyed the man's life. Far from irredeemable, Robertson actually becomes a tragic figure, something few would have felt possible just a hundred pages earlier. The tools and tricks that Welsh uses to accomplish this, his success in doing so, put the lie in the description of this as a peculiar kind of brilliance. It is just brilliant. Welsh represents his text in a variety of formats. Carol Robertson, Bruce's estranged wife, the tapeworm, both present their own narrative in different styles. Carol is given the significance of bold type. The tapeworm's thoughts overlay Bruce's own, wrapped in a worm-like form. We see italics as song lyrics confuse his monologue, large passages of white space as he struggles for coherence, and the confusion of we and I as his personality ruptures. As Robertson passes his breaking point, these deviations come in a flurry and form a highly effective textual representation of an unravelling psyche. Robertson is an enormously powerful portrayal of the destructiveness of self-loathing and undiagnosed trauma. As a literary character, he is up there with the very best, and his end is fittingly executed by Welsh. The book is not all perfect. The trip to Amsterdam seems like it might be unnecessary. Likewise, the late-in-the-book decision to film some bestial pornography. For a misogynist with such well-documented failings in the personal hygiene department, Robertson's success with attracting women seems unlikely. The extremely coarse language and the Scottish vernacular, reminiscent of James Kelman's How Late It Was, How Late, won't be for everyone and will be indecipherable to some. Here's a handy guide but anyone capable of dealing with them is in for a treat. I cannot recommend this book any higher. It's not for everyone, but perhaps the people that feel the need for this trigger warning are the ones that need to read it the most. Filth is well worth investigating. See what I did there? It's a cop book, see? Unless you suffer from Kumpaunophobia, you have no excuse for not clicking the buttons down below, especially those marked sub and like. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.